One thing that can tend to slow us down quite a bit when we're making our applications is when we don't really know how something behaves. So say we have a property like this crib property we have here, and we know it's got some data attached to it. We know it's got some keys and some values, but when we don't really know exactly what's on there, then we can tend to run into trouble. And so what I mean by that is if we wanted to use this crib property, say we wanted to use it here within our class, and this is just kind of dummy code, but just for the sake of example, if we wanted to say, let's get the number of bedrooms that's associated with that crib property. So we could say let bedrooms equal this crib dot bedrooms. And so we could get the number of bedrooms. We'd have that on our local bedrooms variable here. And then maybe we would want to get the number of kitchens. Not many homes will have more than one kitchen, but if we wanted to get the number of kitchens, we could say this crib dot kitchens. Now the issue with this is that this kitchens key doesn't actually exist in our data. So if we take a look again at our data, what we see is that we've got that number of bedrooms key, but we don't have anything that is specific to kitchens. So when we go to use this now in our application, what we'll find is we'll get an error. We'll get something like kitchens is not defined. So this creates some friction when we're building our applications. Now, fortunately, TypeScript gives us this way to be really explicit about what kind of data should exist on this crib property. And the way that we can do that is by using what are called interfaces. And essentially, an interface is a class that is going to describe how something should be shaped or what kind of keys and values it should contain. So to see how this works, why don't we go ahead and implement an interface for our crib property? And we can do this with the CLI. So let's go over to the command line and let's generate an interface. So we'll clear this and we'll say ng g for generate. And we'll say we want an interface this time and let's call it crib. So this is going to be our crib interface. So when we run that, we get a file created for us under source app and it's going to be crib.ts. So back over in our editor, we can find that file right here at crib.ts. So what we've got now is this interface that's being exported and right now it's bare, there's nothing on it, but we can include some definitions for our crib property here. So the way that we'll do this really is we'll look at the data that we've got, we'll look at our cribs.ts file and we'll take a look at everything that's included and this will give us hints about what should go into our interface. So let's transfer these over. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to name the property and then give it a type. Once again, we're working with TypeScript, which allows us to define types for our data. And in this case, ID is going to be a number and type is going to be a string. Price will be a number, address a string, and so on. All right, so over here in cribts, let's start with ID. So we know we want ID to be a number and we want type to be a string and we want price to be a number. We've got address, which should be a string and we've got description, which should be a string as well. We've got the number of bedrooms, that's a number. Bathrooms is a number as well. We've also got the area which we're expressing in square footage, so that should be a number as well. I'm just gonna change this colon over to a comma. And then finally, we've got image, which is a string. And again, that's going to be the name of the image that we want to use for each of the cards. All right, so if we save this, what we can do over in our crib card component is we can import it now. So we'll say that we want to import crib so that's the name of our interface that we're exporting from here. So we want to import crib from, and we want to go up one level and then into the crib.ts file. Once again, we just leave off that .ts from there. So now that we're importing crib as an interface, we can make use of it. So we can say that our crib local property here needs to abide by the crib interface. And right away, you'll see that we've got some underlining happening, pointing to some errors. So I would expect that kitchens would get underlined because that doesn't exist on our interface, but bedrooms should be there. So let's see what's happening. And yes, I forgot to put the S on bedrooms. So let's save that. And then now we get bedrooms showing up as we'd expect. But of course, kitchens still gets an error because no kitchens member exists on our interface. So the other benefit here is that anytime we want to make use of something on our crib property, well, we've got a list of things that are available. So we know we can use the description, but if we wanted to use something else, again, like the number of kitchens, if we thought that was there for some reason, well, we know now that it's just not available. So interfaces give us a really nice way of knowing exactly how something should be used. We know now exactly how it should be interfaced with, hence the name interface.